Hello, my name is Keith Massey and I'm the Science Director and Co-Founder of the Cure RTD Foundation. RTD is short for Riboflavin Transport Deficiency, which is a devastating, life-shortening, early onset recessive genetic disorder previously known as Brown Violento Van Lair Syndrome. RTD was first reported in 1894 as an infantile form of ALS associated with hearing loss. RTD damages motor and nerve cells, slowly taking away a person's ability to hear, see, move, walk, and even breathe. Despite the physically devastating effects of the disease, the mental capabilities of people with RTD remain completely intact. Over half of all individuals with RTD will start to develop symptoms under the age of three, with over 95% developing symptoms by the age of 20. Untreated, less than 50% of people with RTD sadly survive past their 10th birthday. The exact symptoms, age of onset, severity, and rate of disease progression are highly variable, even among siblings. Between 2008 and 2010, the SLC 52, A2, and A3 genes were first identified as providing instructions for making riboflavin transporters in humans. These transporters play an essential role in transporting riboflavin, more commonly known as vitamin B2, across cell membranes throughout the body. Shortly after this discovery, it was demonstrated that genetic mutations in these two genes were the cause of RTD. This discovery led to trials of high-dose riboflavin, which are found to stabilize or improve clinical symptoms in many patients. However, to be clear, riboflavin treatment alone is not a cure for RTD. In many patients, riboflavin treatment alone only helps slow down the progression of certain features of the disease, and the long-term prognosis of patients with RTD on riboflavin treatment alone is currently unknown. The prevalence of RTD is estimated to be 1 in 1 million people, with 1 in 500 people being a carrier of the disease. Since 2010, CureRTD is aware of well over 200 people who have been genetically diagnosed with RTD across six continents and many different ethnicities. Up to 2008, RTD was considered an ultra-rare disease, with only 75 patients reported in the literature. This is the main reason why most doctors have never heard of the disease. However, since the discovery of the two genes causing RTD, it now appears that RTD was not being properly recognized by the medical community. Based on the genetic frequency of these mutations, there could be potentially thousands of people worldwide who remain undiagnosed with RTD. Okay. The, reason I first... the reason I first got involved with RTD research and the foundation is one extremely close to my heart. In 2011, my three-month-old daughter, Julia, presented with transfusion-dependent megoblastic anemia and respiratory failure. After two years of disease progression, during which time she lost most of her vision and hearing along with other complications, we finally discovered she had RTD type 2 through whole exome sequencing. Julia my name is Julia Massey. And I have RTD. And I, when I was younger, um, did you know? But I wasn't. I wasn't strong, healthy, like you guys. And when when I got older, they gave me riboflavin and other vitamins four times a day, and I got strong, healthy, and and. I had three eyes. That's how my hearing works. Yeah, that's right. And I hope other people with RTD are good treatments. That's right. That's what we're working on. Love you, darling. <laughs> Say goodbye. Bye, everyone. Have a great night. Individuals with mutations in the SLC52A2 gene are considered to have RTD type 2. Individuals with mutations in the SLC52A3 gene are considered to have RTD type 3. Although there are many overlaps in the symptoms of these two types of RTD, there are also many distinct differences. 
When Julia was first diagnosed in 2013, only three other families with RTD type 2 had been published, and all in the past year. On reading these case reports, I immediately recognized RTD symptoms in my first cousin's two children who had gone undiagnosed for 16 years and in a steady decline. Sure enough, on genetic testing, we confirmed they both had RTD type 2. Given that riboflavin treatment alone is only a partially effective treatment, more research is desperately needed to both optimize current riboflavin treatment, develop other disease-modifying therapies, and eventually develop a cure and eradicate this horrible disease. The CureRTD Foundation was launched in 2016 by families affected by RTD that made the unanimous decision to work together towards a common goal of curing RTD. CureRTD is a volunteer-based, nonprofit foundation based in the United States and is the only foundation dedicated to pursuing and directly funding RTD research worldwide. Over the past two years, the foundation has already funded eight separate important RTD research projects in three continents, including most re recently Phase One research on gene replacement therapy by Dr. Steve Gray's lab in Texas. CureRTD is 100% funded by the generosity of the public and all money goes directly to research. Our RTD families have not only overcome the challenges of caring for an individual with RTD, but many are also doing compelling fundraising events, drawing on their local community to fuel this international endeavor. As genetic testing becomes cheaper and more common and the medical community becomes more aware of RTD symptoms, we expect to see a large increase in the number of people diagnosed with RTD in the years to come. I am very excited about what the future holds and we keep getting closer to providing life-changing treatment and a cure for people everywhere living with RTD. I truly believe that together we can build a brighter future for everyone living with RTD and I thank everyone for their generous support of the Cure RTD Foundation. For more information on the Foundation or RTD or to donate, you can visit us on Facebook or on the web at curerTD.org. Thank you very much.